In the last video we were setting up my Raspberry Pi from scratch. In this video we're going to set it up headless. That means no mouse, no keyboard, no monitor. This was originally part of our video where we did the setup of our Raspberry Pi, but it got a bit long and not everyone would want to set it up headless. Let's get started. I'm here in the office now and I'm just on uh, my dad's Mac. And so, we have a shell open. In this video I'm using this and this is called Item and if you have an Apple um, computer then you can get that and it's free. If you don't get that then this is a terminal and it should come as standard on your computer. I have a Windows laptop here and if you have one of these you can just type in here you can actually type um, CMD and then you can see command prompt and you can launch that and here you this should be enough to get you guys started. I'm on a web browser and this is the address here, um, 192.168, yeah you can read, and that is actually speaking to this guy here and that's our router, and so that router is just bringing up this web page here, and I've just gone on to um, advanced LAN settings and then it's got a client list here, and so these are all the things that are connected to our router, and you can see here Number 18 is Raspberry Pi, and that's our Raspberry Pi that we've just connected to. And so it's automatically given it, um, assigned it an IP address and everything. So this brings on to my next point. So I mentioned earlier that you can connect to your Raspberry Pi um, headlessly. And so if you didn't have a monitor or um, our mouse and keyboard, we can connect to it this way. So of course it would have to be powered and it would have to be connected to our router. Um, but we can do this. So if I just do in our shell and then the IP address which is 192.168.1.124 I think that's the address printer oh that's so I've just realised what went wrong I've done 192.169 it should be 168 so I'll just yeah you can see I've done a mistake there so I've just pressed the up key there and you can just reload what I've just written so it's 192.168 okay dot one dot one twenty four so enter there we go so now that's just pinging our raspberry pi so i'm just going to press Control c sorry i forgot to explain to you guys what ping was and what it was doing so as you can see earlier when i tried to ping tried to contact um this ip address which was a computer that doesn't even exist it printed this request timeout because it's trying to contact something that doesn't even exist so of course it's going to time out um, whereas here, when we managed to ping the correct IP address, the IP address of our Raspberry Pi, it you know printed something, and this time is just how long it took um, to reply to us. And this just means that our Raspberry Pi is alive and present. It's actually there, and it, it can hear us. So we can do this for anything. Let's let's ping at Google.com. Google, and you can see that Google dot com exists luckily um, and this is just the time it's taking to reply so we can just control c that now i'm going to try to actually get onto my sister's raspberry pi and i presume this probably won't work but let's try it anyway so i need to do ssh and that's just secure shell and then you want to do the username which at the moment is just pi because we didn't reset or anything and then at and then the well, where it lives, which is the IP address, which was the 192.168. So I'll actually just type that. 192.168, is that correct this time? Yep, dot one dot one twenty four. Okay. And then let's see if it works. And of course, it says connection refused. So we need to fix that. When I was um, younger, when I was my sister's age, um, this would have worked. And now I did have a hunch that this would happen because of security reasons. Well, I'm presuming it's because of security reasons. Because anyone, when they boot up their new Raspberry Pi, like what we've just done, they're open to attackers doing exactly what we've just done. And it's similar to what I did when I hacked my dad's computer, apart from the fact that I had to crack my dad's password. Whereas here, everyone knows what the default password is because it's Raspberry. Um, because that's the same for any other new person who's set up their Raspberry Pi. I have another hunch. If I just do this, ping Raspberry. Right, okay. I'm gonna press um, Ctrl C to stop that. And the IP address is just a load of numbers, but we had to go through all of this to get hold of it. Now, we could have just gone through to the other room, to my sister's Raspberry Pi, and got gotten the IP address, but the purpose of this video is 
how do you access your Raspberry Pi if it's headless, if it's got no monitor, keyboard or mouse connected to it, if it's just sitting on the network or lowly waiting for someone to talk to it? Because some people might not even want to buy a monitor or any extra stuff. This is how I managed to get access of the IP address and I even had to put in the password of our router but there's another way. You'll notice when I pinged google.com I didn't type in the IP address, I typed in google.com. When you go to a website like YouTube or Google or any other website you don't type in the IP address because that would be crazy typing in all those numbers and remembering them. You type in the domain name like this, um, just google.com. But you could type in the IP address. Let's do that. So I'll just copy this. Put a new tab. See, it goes to google.com. So in the same way we can use google.com instead of its IP address, we can use raspberrypi.local instead of its IP address. Now, when I was my sister's age, you had to do all this by hand, but now it seems to come already done for you. We can see the security issue here because my brother knows that my sister's just got a brand new Raspberry Pi and we've just booted it up. And he also knows how to connect onto that by SSHing into raspberrypi.local because raspberrypi.local is what everyone's Pi will be at the beginning. He also knows the password because he doesn't have to crack it like I had to do when I had my dad's computer because by default it's already set as Raspberry. So he could easily connect onto my sister's Raspberry Pi and cause havoc. But he wouldn't do that, I don't think, because he's a nice guy. But he can't do that because this is no longer enabled by default. Now if we wanted, we could change that by going to Raspberry Pi at the top, Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration, wait for that to load, okay, then go on to Interfaces, and you can see here, if you go down, SSH is disabled and we could just click Enable. But we don't want to do that because what if you don't have a monitor? So what we're going to do is we're just going to shut this down. So we're going to go log out and then shut down. It's shut down. I've turned off the power and now I'm going to take out the SD card. How do you connect your SD card to a normal computer? Well, your computer may just be able to take um, your SD card as it is. But if it can't, then you can get one of these and then you just plug that into there. And then there might be somewhere to slot this in on your computer. And if that doesn't work, then you can get one of these. And then you just put this into the back. And then this is a normal USB jack, so you can just plug that into your computer on the back or wherever it is. Now there's another option. You can get one of these. Now this came with our Raspberry Pi kit, um, my sister's kit. Um, and this is pretty cool because you just put your SD card into the back there. And then you can either plug this, this is a USB-C um, one, into your computer, or you can just, which is, this is what we're going to use, use this, which is a normal USB, and it can go into the normal USB sockets. I'm not sure what happened to the footage that explained this, but we just inserted the SD card into the back of the computer, and it just appeared here in Finder as boot. And essentially all we have to do is create a file named ssh in boot and it should work. So we'll just show you how to do this. At the back of our computer and it's come up on finder as boot here. And then you can see all the files and folders that are on it. All we have to do is just put a file on here called ssh. And of course there are many ways that you can do that. So we may as well just use our shell to make our file. So first thing we need to do is cd, which is change directory, so cd, and then slash volumes. Now that's just because on a Mac that is where all of our external drives are, so enter. Okay, so we're in volumes. Now let's just do ls, which just lists all the files and directories in volumes. There we go. Now you can see boot here, so we need to change directory again into boot. So let's do cd, change directory, and then boot, I'm just going to do tab fills it in for me. Enter. Okay, now we are in boot. Let's just ls and list. This, remember, lists all the files that are in boot and directories. So all of these here are just listed on our shell here. Well, apparently, all we have to do is make a um, file called ssh. So let's um, touch 
Um, by the way, if you don't understand what we're doing, we'll cover it in future videos, because that's the stuff that I'm going to be teaching you and my sister. So touch and then SSH, enter. Oh, I just saw something pop up there as well. You can see SSH has just been created there, which is pretty cool. And we can just LS again here just to check that it's definitely here. Where are we? There we go, SSH. I'll eject that and then let's get that into our Pi. We've put the SD card back in our Raspberry Pi and booted it all up. And we've got this warning saying SSH is enabled, which means what we've done is worked. So now you know how to set up a Raspberry Pi headless. And the first thing you're gonna to want to do is change that password. Let's see if we can connect to my sister's Raspberry Pi from another computer. So SSH, secure shell, Pi, that's just its username, at Raspberry, oh wait, Raspberry Pi dot local. Remember, this is just where it lives. Let's enter. Okay, that's progress because that is something that um, didn't happen before. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and it's asking us for the password, which we all know is Raspberry because we haven't changed it yet. Enter. And we're in her Raspberry Pi. So we can do anything we want now. Um, we can change the password if we want to do, you know, run servers, anything we want. We have just connected to my sister's Raspberry Pi using a computer. Now remember, this can be any sort of computer, Windows, Ubuntu, um, even another Raspberry Pi. Um, in this case, we just use our Mac because that's what we had. Now let's try connecting to my sister's Raspberry Pi using a tablet or a smartphone. You can do this on any form of tablet or smartphone, you know, even Android, you know, any anything will work. Um, in this case, we're just using an iPhone and iPad because that's what I had to hand. I went into the App Store and just searched SSH and it came up with a bunch of apps to use. I mean, in this case, I just went for the first one that came up, Termius. And on my phone, I went for this one called Network Checker. I've just put in SSH Pi at 192.168.1.124. And if you remember from earlier, this number is just its IP address. Now, it'll be different for um, you guys probably because you'll be on a different network. But this is just the specific IP address for ours. Um, also, if you remember from earlier as well, I said that you could put Raspberry Pi dot local. Now, I tried it and it didn't work, so I ended up having to put the IP address. So that's that. Let's connect. It's just here. Oh, have to put in the password, which of course is Raspberry because I've not changed it. Connect. And there we go, we're on. Um, let's just try um, a few commands like ls um, minus l. That just lists all the files you can see here and directories as well. Um, let's do top and this just shows us the top processes that are running. You can see here. And then I can do control c just to stop that. So let's look at the iPhone one. So I've just gone on to tools here and then SSH shell, then connect here. Um, and then I just, I've already typed it all in. So I'm just gonna click on that and that fills it in for me. Um, and this time raspberry pi.local um, actually works. I don't have to put in the IP address, which is really good. This is just the username obviously and our password. Let's go done and it's connecting us. Oh, and this works. Let's type in a few commands, um, such as ls, oh, that's MA, ls, um, can do minus l. There we go, that lists um, some of the documents, sorry, the documents, the, oh, and <laughs> an alarm. Let's try, that's done. Let's try, oh, I know, top. Again, what we've just done, the top um, processes. Um, Control C, little thing here, so let's press that. There we go. I'm just going to type in W H O who um, there. Done. Let's see. Um, one slash one. Who? Ah, oh, here we go. So that's worked there, and you can see it's printed three things here. Um, let's try it on our iPad because it's a bit clearer. Um, that's our phone going off. Um, let's try who again. So we've got the three things again, and so the first one here, this. Anyone gonna get that? Thank you. Um, so the first one here, um, you can see it's got no number next to it, no IP address next to it. That is actually my sister now on her Raspberry Pi. That's her Raspberry Pi. Now these two here will be 
our iPad um, connected to my sister's Raspberry Pi and our phone connected to my sister's Raspberry Pi. And these two numbers next to it, the two IP addresses, are the IP address of either our iPad and our phone. I don't know which is which at the moment. So what I'm going to do now here is I'm just going to exit and then that will log us out and we'll see what happens. I'll just do, oh, I'll say something. exit, done, see what happens. Oh, it's logged out, okay. Um, now let's see what happens when we press right who again. There you go, you can see that one of these has vanished, we've only got two. And remember the first one is my sister on her Raspberry Pi now, and this one must be us on our iPad logged in. Hopefully you can now see how easy and accessible it is to set up your Raspberry Pi headless. So if you have just um, a phone, a second hand phone, any, well any phone, Android or anything, um, cheap Pi Zero, um, between five and 10 pounds really, um, and you connected it to your network, you've also got a free app, then you're sorted and you've got everything you need to follow along with our videos and do everything you really need to do on your Raspberry Pi. And if you want to go for a luxury setup, all the whistles, all the bangs, everything, then that's cool as well. At the moment, we've just connected remotely using the shell, but you can connect remotely um, and get, you know, get the desktop, you know, using the mouse and getting all the graphics and the games and stuff, um, which is fun as well. And we'll be doing videos on that, how to do that as well. But if you're watching this video like us, you're probably wanting to delve a little bit deeper than the desktop, um, although that is very fun. Um, and so that's sort of why we've done it this way. And make sure to check out all the other videos in this series, you know, hacking and cracking the Raspberry Pi and everything. Um, and if you're into electronics, we have other videos around those topics as well. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.